Hi, welcome to this talk about peeking into the EPPF verifier. I'm Shongxi Yu and I work at SUSE as a kernel engineer. So let's begin. What is the verifier? Well, the verifier is what stands between our BPF program and the deep dark chasing of destruction. When EPPF program are being loaded, the verifier will check the program to see if they're safe. If they're not, the program will be rejected and can never run. But how does the verifier work? The verifier works by checking the type and value used in the program. Let's see an example. Here we have an eBPF program. The return value should be an integer and we return zero. And since the type of zero is indeed integer, this program will pass the verifier. Now, if we have another program that returns the socket buffer pointer instead of zero, the verifier will reject because an integer is not the same type as socket buffer pointer. But before the verifier can reject our code, the compiler will usually first complain. So why do we need the verifier when we already have compilers? The reason is that compilers trust the user too much. To see what I mean, let's look at the same code, but this time, we can cast the socket buffer pointer too long. And in this case, the compiler will no longer complain but you give it to the verifier. The verifier will still reject this code. And that is because the verifier sees things vastly differently from the compiler. The com verifier does not see all the types we wrote. Instead, the verifier has its own type system. And in this case, it will infer from the ground up that skb is pointer to context, which is not the same type as scalar, and thus reject the program. So far, we've only covered how type checks. But what about values? Well, to see how value checking works, let's look at another example. Here, we are accessing an array, ARR, using an unsigned integer i as the offset. The verifier will actually reject this program. And this usually caught newcomers off guard. So why does the verifier reject this code? Well, the reason is that the verifier is very pessimistic. Just as people can see half cup of water differently, the verifier and the compiler also sees array access very differently. The compiler will lean toward the access being with bound, while the verifier will lean toward the access being out of bound. But the verifier is not drawing that conclusion out of thin air. The way the verifier reason is like this. It sees that i is externally initialized. So it reasons that i can just be any unsigned integer value, which means i can be a value between 0 and 2 to the 32 minus 1. Now, if you try to do array access using 2 to the 32 minus 1, it will be out of bound. And therefore, the verify reject the scope. To make the verify happy, we can use if statement to trim down the possible value of i. Here's how that works. At first, the verifier still thinks that i can be any value between 0 and 2 to the 32 minus 1. But inside the if statement, it can reason that since i is less than or equal to 3, i can only be a value between 0 and 3. In this way, it can be sure that array access with i is always within bound, and therefore the program is safe. The same thing can be done in the different way with bitwise and a mask. The verifier will still come to the same conclusion that the access is safe. Now, I need to make a small confession though. What I've said so far is not really how the verifier works. The verifier deals with low-level details called bytecodes and register. But conceptually, it's close enough. So instead of variable i2, the verifier deals with register r2 which is where the variable i2 is stored. And in that way, the verifier checks the type and value of eBPF program to make sure they're safe. Thank you for listening. You can check out the slides for additional links to resources if you're interested.